Okay, let's bring the meeting to order. Are there any changes or additions to the agenda as presented? Uh, I do have a few here. Okay. Um, we can strike the uh, NVU intern um, because of, of COVID restrictions and a variety of other issues uh, that's not gonna come together this year. Uh, okay. Despite our best efforts. Um, uh, then I've got a heads up on a uh, dog bite uh, question about our first meeting in March and a question about our uh, informational meetings to bring to the board. Okay, so those are all three separate items, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, the only thing I want to add was uh, a short flood discussion. Does anyone else have anything they wanted to add or changes to, to the agenda? Kyle? I just had a few um, comments I wanted to make about the town report. Town report, okay. And I'm not seeing anyone else shaking their heads or waving their hands. Okay, with that, let's move into, is the board prepared to approve the meeting minutes for January 25th and February 1st? Uh, we actually have, uh, before that, we've got the um, public hearing on the USDA oh. grant application by the Vermont Studio Center. Okay, I'm sorry, that's correct. So we'll uh, recess our meeting until that hearing is complete. And who was going to lead the hearing? Is it going to be somebody from the studio center? Yeah, that was the plan. I don't see them on. Um, I'm assuming that Kim is our usual Kim and not from the studio center. Um, so I can give a very brief update on this to give them a little bit of time to come in. Okay, uh, the grant application they're making for is a rural development grant uh, that's uh, for uh, nonprofit uh, and other community organizations are eligible. And the studio center uh, is making the application for kind of fitting out and completing the renovations on Pearl Street. Uh, on the, the home that they've been renovating on Pearl Street. So it'll go for a lot of the interior on that, that building. Um, there is no, uh, the, the town's function in this is just uh, community awareness that people have, are aware that this project is going on. Uh, we're not, it's not through us. We're not handling or acting as a fiscal agent for them or, or doing anything else. Okay. Um, certainly open it up for any public comments or questions. We try to answer it as best we can. Brian, I had a question. Is this the, the house that's on the um, Legion Field side of, of Pearl Street, kind of abutting Legion Field? As I understand it, yes. I think that's the one that the, yeah, that this is the, the for that one that's in progress, mostly finished, um, and, and we'll go to fitting it out to make it habitable for uh, their uses. The one that's been under construction, likely and fenced off and that type of thing for a long time? Yeah. I, I think the studio center has is, is been really good for for our community and i think if there's a possibility especially in this pandemic of them accessing another source of money to to stay afloat or, or i don't mean to say they're not afloat but uh, to help them in these circumstances i'm certainly in favor of it yep, agreed yeah for sure for sure They've done, be I mean, the renovations that they've done on the other buildings um, over the last couple of years have been beautiful, stunning, and a real asset to our, to our community for sure. 
Uh, I've torn down a couple of stru structures recently, and um, they have uh, put a lot of money into that Pearl Street building. I'm all in favor of this for the reasons previously stated, though. Um, wondering, how are those updates happening on our grant list? Or they're not, I'm assuming. They would be the assessor as of April 1st. If the building's removed, it would get removed from a um, uh, grand list. Right, Rosemary? Yes. And lacking lacking um, an assessor, it, it's not getting done. Uh, we have an assessor until June, for, uh, June 1st, uh, July 1st. I yeah. believe so. Yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't understand that. Thank you. And uh, the buildings they took down were, I believe, smaller and probably graded a little lower, whereas the building they've just renovated will be grant graded fairly high because uh, they've done a fabulous job with it. I talk right across the road from me, so I look at it every day. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Do they want a, a letter of support or what, is there anything that they're looking for? Uh, they don't need a letter of support from us. Uh, this is related to something that they had applied for some time ago that we had expressed some support for this project in general. Um, this particular grant application uh, really just needed the, the public hearing to be eligible for the funds. Okay. You so you'll be reaching back out to them and telling them we had the public hearing. Yep. Um, um, and actually, if I can ask Donna, um, if we can get this part of the minutes tomorrow, uh, that would be perfect uh, because I can send it in as part of their. I can send it to them, and they can send it in as part of their their application. So we don't need all of the minutes and we don't need them approved, but if we can just have kind of our official minutes header that this was included. Uh. And you might also wanna share a recommendation that they have somebody here for their hearing. It wasn't our hearing. Yeah, um, They really should have somebody here to answer any questions. That had been the plan, um, I'm not sure about the circumstances. Okay. Uh, but yeah, they had planned on having someone here. Perfect. So Brian, do you need a motion or just a consensus? Or I, I think just consensus. I mean, again, the board isn't taking any action here. Uh, we're just providing a forum for questions if anybody had them. Okay, thank you. Okay, and you didn't see any hands up from the public? No, I haven't seen any hands from the public. Okay. Uh, with that, then let's uh, reconvene our select board meeting. Uh, back to, is the board prepared to approve the meeting minutes for January 25th and February 1st? So moved. We have a motion, do we have a second? I'll second. second. Motion and second, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, the ayes have it. Rosemary, you got the floor. Okay, I sent out the budget status reports to everybody. And to date, we are at 51 and 45% spent of budget. I don't know how you want to go down this thoroughly or. Uh, is there any highlights or any concerns? Anything jumps out? We received um, most of our state aid payments. We still um, will get the final uh, highway to highway money. We've got three quarters of that. We've got our current use payments and we got the pilot money and we've got our AR lands pilot money. Okay. 
seems like the uh, revenue was pretty much uh, um, close to 100% of the budget, something yes. a little bit under. And spent expenses to date were 50-ish percent, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Anybody have anything they'd like to dive into that a little deeper with? Still a little early in the winter to see the much impact. Okay, go ahead. And uh, current taxes to date, we're at 75.27%. Last year at the same time, we were at 75.56, and the year before was 75.08%. So we're in line with previous two years. Okay. And I just need a motion to have Eric to sign the warrants, and I think that's all that I have for tonight. What's the board's pleasure? So moved. Got a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Okay, we got a second. Uh, one question on that, Rosemary. City cards. Yeah, I looked up in. Credit card. It's our credit card. It's a credit card. Our, cost, our Costco credit card. I looked up in the invoice and it looked like mostly rec committee expenses. Uh, and about 1300. It was mostly, um, Hugh bought a few um, parts for the garage and there was a monitor, he got a monitor and there was quite a bit of library stuff and recreation was just for their uh, prime account. Okay, so it was a, a spread across a few different things, something emergency yeah. management too, which I didn't know what That's that the was. That's Zoom, the me Zoom meetings. We had to pay $53 oh. a month for Zoom. Okay, okay. That's the only question I got. Anybody else any questions or comments or anything on the, uh, the motion authorizing the chair to sign the orders? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Anything else, Rosemary? No, that's all. Anybody got any questions for Rosemary? Thank you, Rosemary. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, we got Hugh on board here somewhere, I believe. Uh, we do. I'm going to uh, pause us for just one second. Uh, the Studio Center does actually have uh, Jim uh, McDowell on. He's just on a different laptop, so his name didn't show up as Jim. Okay. Um, did anybody have any questions for the Studio Center specifically? Is he on right now? Yep. Where is he? Uh, I'll ask him to unmute here. Hey folks, sorry I missed that. Uh, you guys are right up and at him and on time. So I was a few minutes late, but I did catch the discussion. Um, and uh, thanks for circling back, Brian. Are there questions? The project is basically to outfit and ready the Pearl project right across from Eric that was referenced. Uh, appreciate the good words for the investments we're making and uh, definitely wanna be present when there are questions because um, we're beginning to go a little uh, more regularly in this kind of opportunity shut down pause session to uh, maybe do some other master plan project. So um, gonna try to be really upfront and clear about what we're, doing some of which will be some other buildings um, possibly coming down. We have that in the initial stages of our board review. And then of course we've got Act 250, et cetera. But um, I think I will continue to keep you posted. And uh, I, um, I'm i also open to any suggestions you have as you know uh, how to stay, keep you abreast of what we're doing. Any board comments? Thank you, June. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Jim. I guess I, I'm, I'm assuming that moving forward with these projects is a good sign that the Studio Center will does indeed plan to, to reopen one day. <laughs> um, 
post COVID the way the way it used to is that is that correct in my thinking? I'm just curious what what the conversation around reopening is. Well, it is a good sign. In fact, I'm really delighted with the new executive director. Um, Elizabeth Holford, who's really taken a sharp revisioning look at our master plan. We, I think we presented to many of you, um, really sealed and committed to in 2014, but nimble. And so basically these moves initially are some demolitions. Uh, the, the, what I'm suggesting is next that you'll see uh, is some work that was intended um, initially to be kind of spread across a 10 year period of the master plan implementation. Um, and we're just having an opportunity to change that around, uh, not only by the absence of our residents currently, but um, by a re-look at the standards. And really, we're just taking them up a bit, really looking for sustainability parity. That's very important to us. And as we've done some of these investments, we've found we're uh, broadening those disparities between some of the places we have yet to renovate and those we have already. And uh, so, Kyle, it's likely that you'll see us reopen with a smaller group, really using determined, by, you know, limiting factor is the housing we've already invested in, saying that's our standard. We really don't want to return people to those spaces that are, um, you know, John and George put online and we're courageous about operating, but uh, just in this day and age and human health and safety, um, plus those issues of parity, which are very important to us, uh, they don't fly. So um, I don't want to speak out of school here, but I, I think we're going to look at a group maybe about a third of the size of our maximum, which is about 60. So we'll be opening up with probably 20 in our first few sessions. And probably that master plan will be adjusted so that we go after housing where we feel those investments are most important. They're hardest for me to get into between sessions and do any work. And they're also where people... Um, spend a significant part of their time. So air quality, efficiency, and uh, we're looking at even changing some ratios. We had assumed about how many residents share a bath and we're looking at really one-to-one -one ratios now where mm -hmm. that's another, I kind of applaud all these kind of uh, upticks of our standards. Anyway, sorry to go on and maybe take too much of your time. I know you have a lot in the agenda, but uh, any other questions then I'll step off and end with appreciation. Thank you for your words and thank you for your support. Jim, my only thank you for sorry, Matt. Go ahead. Sorry, uh, I just, uh, no, was, uh, just a word of thanks. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I, I just wanted to follow up by asking Jim where we can access the uh, um, the upgraded or updated uh, master plan because I, I saw the original, but I haven't actually seen the updated one. Is there a, a hard copy somewhere on online? Uh, no, in fact, that actually as a document, as a shareable, um, that those revisions hasn't, haven't been made to the kind of communication piece we are uh, simply recognizing. I can share with you what the, what the kind of upfront phase one stuff is, which is some building removals uh, that aren't healthy buildings. Um, some are kind of embedded in our campus and won't have any impact on the village uh, or the, you know, kind of street side view shed. Um, but we need to invest in our, uh, the Red Mill dining facility, uh, the dining room itself and the kitchen to bring it up to sort of, uh, you know, professional commercial kitchen standards. Um, and then we'll cycle back instead of doing sort of studio housing back and forth as our original plan intended that you had, had been shared with you folks. Um, it looks like we're gonna focus on those kind of big old Queen Anne homes and the what we call the corner house. So this the Clay Hill, Pearl Street, School Street intersection there, those two buildings that you know are look down School Street and the, the corner house, the pale yellow one next to the project house. Those are being kind of front loaded. And I suspect um, that's a lot of, those are a lot of funds to raise. So, uh, but I think as we're, if everything moves smoothly, uh, those can be 10 to 12 month projects and we'd love to do them back to back. But much engineering, architecture and permitting before we even get started with that and fundraising. Sure, sure. Okay, thank you. That's, that's sure. a great overview. Thank you. And sorry, Nat, for jumping in. Not at all. Okay. Well, thank you again, Jim, for uh, 
coming on and being available and answering questions. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night. Thanks, Jim. Uh, Hugh, you got the floor. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. <clears throat> um, just a brief report um, going over what we've been doing in the past 30 days. Um, continuing to plow. Uh, we've used a little over half of our sand um, for the year. We still have uh, money left in our budget if we do need to buy more, but uh, I'm pretty comfortable with where we're at right now, so I'm not too concerned with that. Um, statistically speaking, our salt use is a, down a little bit. Um, I attribute that mostly to our new operator. Um, he has a different philosophy on how we put salt down and it's certainly saving us um, some usage. So I'm uh, very happy with uh, Mark and how he does his route. And as far as I know, we haven't had uh, many complaints uh, in regards to the condition of the road. So um, <clears throat> that's nice because salt is incredibly expensive. Um, we've, if there is some downtime, we are continuing to do some virtual trainings. Each guy is, uh, we're usually doing an hour a week, um, whatever Vermont Local Roads has to offer on their curriculum. So just in the past three weeks, we've done uh, electrocution, trench safety, and we also had a round table discussion with folks all over the state in regards to road postings and weight limits and things like that. Um, that pertain to mud season. <clears throat> um, the shelving back of snow has started. Uh, the guys have completed all of that, pushing back banks and making room for even more snow. Um, that's pretty much went off without a hitch. And um, we also started doing some winter grading over the past month. We installed some different style bits on the grader blade that allow us to start taking some chunks of ice off. Um, it's my feeling that if we can continue to limit the amount of ice buildup on these rows, that's going to help mitigate mud season when the time comes. So we've uh, adopted some new strategies and it smooths the roads out in the wintertime and also helps to start chipping away at that layer that uh, is always building up. Um, and last but not least, just wanted to put a bug <clears throat> in the board's ear that the Ram 2500 that we have um, is no longer under warranty and um, it's starting to have some issues mechanically that are a little bit concerning to me. Uh, we just spent a thousand dollars on it uh, in the past week. Um, and from what I understand, it had, had to have a transmission replaced under warranty prior to my arrival. So, um, watching it, but I'm a little concerned. I just wanted to mention that now. That's all I have. Brian, when's that pick up on schedule for replacement? Double checking right now, but it's coming up pretty soon. Okay. Um, two more years. Two more years? Two more years, thank you. I, I think, I believe so. That's what I think too, so we're... Okay. And Hugh, what does that, what's the function of that truck specifically? So <clears throat> prior to this year, that truck only handled a lot of these small roads that we have, a lot of these tiny little one home, you know, farmhouse driveways um, that are considered town roads. Um, it shifted into a little bit more of a substantial role. Um, I, we, worked with our roots and I, the whole idea for me was to get our roots done as efficiently as possible. Um, and that truck has now taken on a role of not only doing what it was doing, but it's also going and doing some areas that along the way that are really too tight or dangerous for the big trucks to get in where it's hard to turn around and things like that. And so I'm trying to, uh, it gets used a little bit more than normal. I think that it's, probably going to get to the point where it's just not big enough to do what I want, but I have a plan for everything. I, I like to make sure that we have safeguards um, in place for when trucks 
break down and we can maintain our abilities to treat the roads. And I think that this truck's um, role will be changing over time. Um, it, I don't like to have these vehicles that are capable just sitting. <laughs> um, I like to make sure that no matter what we run into, we can clear the roads in time for the buses and for people to go to work and come home. So um, it's doing a fine job right now, but I think that uh, we may need to look at some options down the road prior to its scheduled departure. Thank you, Hugh. And mm -hmm. thank you also for investigating that complaint on French Hill. <clears throat> Any further questions from board members? How's uh, overtime? I'm assuming we're within well within budget. Yeah, yeah, it's been um, it's been really good this year um, in terms of what we budgeted for. The guys are opting to not take overtime sometimes, um, so it's been uh, it's been really good, and I won't comment on it any further so I don't jinx everything. <laughs> hey, uh, if there's no further board questions, Brian, I'm seeing a hand up. I'm not sure. Is that intentional? I believe so. Uh, Diana. I just wanted to um, give my thanks for the proof of plowing that I'm doing on the road this year. I work at odd hours and leave at, you know, 5.30 a.m. and then come home at 6.30 p.m. And the road has always been um, taken care of in a timely manner and the plowing just seems better and um, the road safer. So thanks. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay. If there's nothing else from Hugh and nobody has any further questions for Hugh, why don't we move on into your uh, report, Brian? Okay. Thank you, Hugh. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, so we struck the NVU intern. Um, this again was a, a request from NVU. They were interested in uh, kind of finding space for uh, their outdoor rec program, uh, but with everything going on, it's just not going to work out this year. So uh, that's not happening. Um, so moving on, uh, we've got Jasmine Uris. The the oven committee has been is seeking uh, the board's permission for a, some grant process. I'm going to unmute Jasmine to help me with this part of the conversation. Thank you, Jasmine. Yeah, thank you, guys. Um, I, it just came to my attention, um, I think it was the last board meeting that committees should come to the select board um, for approval for grant writing. And I guess um, I'm apologizing for not coming to you all for the past uh, two years. I just kind of did it um, and worked with Rosemary um, both, both seasons. Um, but now that I know the straight and arrow, this is the process that I will take. Um, and I'm seeking approval to apply for um, the Rise Vermont Amplify grant um, and also the Healthy and Lamoille Valley grant. Um, I would be asking $1,000 from Rise Vermont and um, each of the Healthy Lamoille Valley grants are $500, but I have heard that that is quite competitive this year. Um, but uh, either way, um, Rise Vermont has been giving us a grant for the past two years. Um, and I, I'm hoping that they'll continue to, to help us um, feed people free pizza every Monday night in the summer. Um, so did I, did I give enough information for you all or? Yeah. I think so, but uh, hang around in case we got some questions. What's the board's pleasure? You wanna put a motion on the floor and then we'll open it up for questions. 
Yeah, motion to authorize. What do you need? Motion to authorize? Yeah, for the thousand dollars from uh, one authorize. group and the Vice Vermont. The Brett Oven Committee to make these um, grant requests. Okay, motion. Do we have a second? Second. Got okay, motion and second. Okay, any questions or now's your opportunity to ask Jasmine anything? You're doing great work with that Brett Oven, the whole committee is. So thank you. Yeah, thank thanks, you. Jasmine. And you're forgiven. <laughs> <laughs> But that, but that's a good, that's a good point that you bring up that maybe, um, Brian, in the future, we should just be really, you know, just clear with, with, uh, with our volunteers about the process. Um, yeah, uh, this was a, an oversight with the oven committee starting out without not being under the town's auspices sure. and making a number of their own applications. And then when they came under we didn't change the process there and we should have. Yeah. So you know, uh, that's totally not our volunteers uh, uh, on them to know something like that without being informed and yeah, an oversight that we didn't update the process. Mm -hmm. uh, but they have made good use of all of their grants and have done a good job representing the town uh, with the organizations that they've partnered with. Yeah, absolutely agreed. And Best of luck. I hope it. I hope it happens. Thank you. Thanks. Guys, one. Is there yes. any other board members? Go ahead, Mike. Right here. Did you get that crack fixed? That was in it. Uh, there was some kind of a, a problem, as I yeah. recall. Yeah. You know, um, it seemed as though our reaction to the crack um, was we were worried about um, quite possibly like an implosion, <laughs> but it's it's natural um, and it was just the oven kind of settling in after we got several eyes on it. Okay. Um, it's, it's absolutely fine. There is a crack in the mantle that we keep our eye on because some of the granite looks like it might um, need some repairing in the future, but um, it's great. It's operating great. Um, and we're, we're getting, we're really dialing in how hot, you know, temperature regulation and all that and that really that really helps <laughs> with the cracking okay. bit so thank you yeah thanks that yeah I, I think to Kyle Kyle brings up a, a good point that um, some guidance um, consistent guidance for volunteers especially since volunteers cycle through and I, I think just if we had a one pager that said you know uh, things for committees to know things for chairs to know um, including information about open meeting law and things like that, just some basics that we distribute every March after we make appointments. I think that would be really helpful. I think that's a good point. Yeah, good suggestion. Exactly. Any further board member questions before I call a, bring it to a vote? Uh, I would open it up to any public members. Is comments. Hugh still here? Is Hugh still here? I don't see him. I don't think so. He's gone. Wanted to remind him that he's, he's, if he's ever cutting down trees that are uh, hazardous to the road, that often the Brett, Brett Oven Committee is uh, grateful for the wood if it's available. Mm -hmm. What kind of wood do you like the best, Jasmine? Dry. <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> I understand that, but what species do you like the best? Hardwood. I understand that, but but, <laughs> what, but what species of hardwood do you want? Mike, we're not we're not picky. Dry okay. and hard. <laughs> no, sometimes different woods work a little better than others, it's and sometimes they, they'll give a better flavor. Yeah, we'll take anything. We'll even okay. take the wet stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Just don't bring down your pine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I got, I got a lot of red pine I want to get rid of. <laughs> so, Brian, is there any hands raised? Or? I'm not seeing any hands from the public. <laughs> okay. If the board's ready, prepared, I'll bring you to a vote. All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Congratulations, Jasmine. Go get the money. Thanks. Thank and you. Thank you. I believe the Conservation Commission's
has got a, a, uh, a proposed bid that they would like us to accept. Yep. So Conservation Commission has gone out uh, for bids for uh, uh, improving the accessibility and making an accessible trail uh, for the Beard Park Recreation, uh, the Beard Recreation Park, that's it, thank you. Um, uh, they've got a number of bids in, uh, they've reviewed them at the committee and they have a, as I understand it, a recommendation uh, for, uh, for the board of uh, Hermit Woods Trail Builders. Um, you know, uh, Lois is here. Lois, can you expand a little on why you selected the uh, Hermit Woods? Yes, I can. Uh, in fact, at the Conservation Commission meeting Thursday evening, it was a unanimous vote. And the decision for Hermit Woods uh, Trail Builders was based on the thoroughness of their proposal. They had a terrific proposal. They're a known trail builder. Their trail building experience was well known by a couple of our members. And their um, price was $7,400. And we liked that figure. Oh yeah, it's really competitive price. Right. We had, um, we had four, four bids total. Uh, we had 12 people who inquired for information. Uh, six, six folks came out and actually looked at the site and then four submitted the bids. And there was quite a range. But um, the, our Conservation Commission members were really good about looking at some of the details in related to stone and that kind of thing. Um, but this was hands above as far as the whole presentation. So we'd like to have you offer them a contract. Okay, what's well, board's pleasure? I uh, move that we uh, offer Hermit Woods Trailblazers LLC a contract for $7,400 to do the work that was required at the site. We have motion, do we have a second? Second. Motion and second, any discussion? I just great work. Sorry. Yeah, oh, we're yeah. stuck on each other. I'm sorry about that. Go ahead. Super, super. I wasn't I guess I wasn't sure if um, Mike had said trailblazers and it's trail builders. Did I did I say trailblazers? If I said trailblazers, I, I meant to make, say I meant to say trail builders. builders. If I did I'll make sure Donna it. gets it right. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I would take that as a friendly amendment. Well, yeah, I don't remember what I said to tell you the truth. <laughs> I thought I said trail builders, but I could have said trailblazers. And I think would the seconder uh, also agree with that? Yes. Okay. I'm Go always ahead. thinking vehicles, I guess. Kyle? Isn't that a basketball team, Trailblazers? Anyway, I don't know. Um, I just SUV. had a comment for you, Lois, and then a comment. For, first, my comment is that this is really exciting. And thank you for the, the whole Conservation Commission for, for taking this on. I, I think it's such an important asset I know my family loves um, Beer Park because it's so accessible and walkable. And in addition to being wheelchair accessible, it's going to be so great for parents strolling strollers. Those steps yeah. are really hard to navigate <laughs> with with a stroller. So that's it's going to make it really family friendly as well. So that's 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 fantastic. Um, my question is: Have did the did the commission um, look at some of the work that this um, this company's done elsewhere? It's just they're so much cheaper. So I was just wondering if there was a little due diligence with looking at some of their past work. Um, um, two of our members had, in fact, walked on trails that they had built. Okay, cool. So you've seen some yep. of their, their work. Right. Okay. okay, great. But and their, their presentation, they, they sent a little package that had some pictures. The other, the other three bids 
were basically just a sheet of paper with very little information. It was hard to, you know, if you had to really think hard about what they were saying as far as what yeah. they were doing. So, and they were a lot more money. Right. Um, just for information, we, after the posting that went to the, the trade publication that Brian had sent it to, um, after that came out, within a day or two, the bulk of the, of the 12 requests for information came in. So, um, and as folks came to look at it, they talked about the fact that folks were looking for work and this wasn't necessarily something they did, but it was something they could do. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, no, the pictures look amazing. I just didn't know if anyone had actually seen it with their own eyes. So thank you. Mm -hmm. Matt, did you have a question? I just I know that it, um, a lot of work went into this from the uh, Conservation Commission just to get to this point. And uh, it's, it's, uh, it's fabulous. I think it's a, a great project for accessibility for the whole community. So thanks for, thanks for your hard work. Any further comments from the board? Not seeing any. Is there any comments from the public? I'm not seeing any. Okay. With that, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Thank you, Lois, for all your hard work. Thank you. Thanks, Lois. When, when do you expect it'll be completed, Lois? Well, um, we, we talked about, the, I talked to each of the bidders about it, about having it done um, as soon in the spring as possible, um, that we didn't really want a construction project in the summer when it, the, the area was really getting a lot of views. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot will depend on what kind of a spring we have and how quickly the snow goes and things get dried out. But um, which brings up my question of, um, I'll, I'll notify the, the bidders, and I told them I'd get back to them. The ones that didn't get it as well as the one that did, but where does the town step in as far as the contract goes? I'll we'll reach talk out. about it later, but. I'll reach out to Hermit and uh, I, I guess that's a good thing that we didn't cover in the motion is uh, who's empowered to sign the contract. It's usually either Eric or myself. Does the board have a preference? Who should move, Eric, move Eric signs it. We have a motion for the chair. Do we have a second? Second. Motion is second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay. You think we caught everything now? Thank you. So. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the constables got a couple of candidates. Yep, we have a couple candidates uh, who've expressed an interest. Um, we have had as many as three in the past. We've usually had two, but uh, I think we've got three people who are interested. That's a good sign. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, why don't we uh, invite each of them to tell us a little bit about themselves. Uh, start with uh, Dean, I guess. Dean Locke. Okay, if you can unmute Dean. Go ahead, Dean. Hey, Dean. Hey, how are we doing? Good. Good. Um, well, uh, my name's Dean Locke. Uh, I've been on the Conservation Commission now for probably about, oh, probably a little bit more than four years now. And uh, I learned of uh, the position that was uh, come up, the animal control and health officer there. And um, it seemed like it might be a, a good fit for me to uh, increase my, you know, kind of service and connection with, with our town and uh, uh, do some more good things for the village and the town of Johnson. Um, I currently have 
you know, the, the uh, time frame and the flexibility to, uh, to be able to, um, you know, uh, look at uh, doing those extra duties. And um, I have uh, a background in, in dealing with uh, animals before and also have a uh, background in working with, uh, you know, working with different kind of levels of uh, people with dealing with communication, paperwork, and whatnot in my uh, past career. So uh, I think it might be a, a good fit for me and maybe a good fit for you guys. So thank you, Dean. Sure. Uh, BJ, would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay, if you can unmute BJ. Yeah, sorry about that. Hey, guys. Um. Dealing with this job specifically, I was a town constable for the town of Troy uh, for a couple of years late in the late 90s. Uh, we only had one uh, animal control officer, which was me. There was no other ones up there. Um, you guys are definitely a lot better set up than we were up there because um, I talked to you, Brian, about some of your setups down here. Uh, dealing with people. Um, I work uh, security and things like that. So I deal with people on a regular basis and issues, uh, diffusing situations and everything. So um, that's pretty much it. Okay. Well, thank you, BJ. Thank it's you, all man. opening up to board members. Any board members got questions for either one of the candidates? Either one or both? I had a question, BJ. Um, Dean mentioned that he's got time and flexibility within his schedule. How is how's what's your schedule like in general? Um, my schedule, I have weird days off. Uh, I get home usually at eight o'clock at night, so I'm able to do night calls. I also have Wednesday, Friday, and Saturdays off. Um, so basically during the days on my Sunday, Monday, and Tuesdays would be hard, but I think that's where the advantage of having other officers that work with us. Um, hopefully that would work with their schedules. Okay, anyone else? And like uh, Brian indicated, uh, we've had as many as three constables in the past. We currently have one. And uh, I know she's a little bit overwhelmed right now. She would appreciate the help. Mm -hmm. So we can, uh, I would take a motion to appoint one and or both. What's the board's pleasure? Or Brian? I, I want to raise a point of clarification that we are at, we have always, in the past, we've always elevated up to the, the constable, but it would be, uh, best practice to appoint to the animal control and health officer at this time and then if everything works out well make that appointment then to the constable good thank you for making that clarification so i think What's you'll go to constable pleasure. your duties will not change very much uh the the big difference if you're not constable is you won't be able to write your own tickets. You'll have to work with our current constable or with the sheriff's department to issue tickets. Um, but I expect, you know, after you know a, a performance review, like a six-month performance review, that we would make the appointment to constable. Um, so yeah, all we're appointing tonight is animal control and health officer. Correct. Okay, I make the motion that. Uh, we appoint Dean Locke and B.J. Putbane to the animal control and health officers position, both of them. I would ask uh, the motioner, do you have a preference on who is first and who's second, who's third? Well, first is uh, Tracy. Yeah. Uh, the question before you would be which constable or which person would you want as second and third. Well, actually, we don't have to decide that tonight, do we? Because that would be a later on discussion. Okay. That's correct. I take that back.
We have a motion. Do we have a second? Um, I would ask, uh, uh, this is an offer of employment based on um, the traditional background checks and whatever else. We aren't checking references, I guess. No, uh, that was going to be a, a request also is uh, if we could add pending a, a successful background check. Pending a successful background check. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Thank you, Mike. We have a motion. Thank you second. for bringing it up. Do we have any discussion? Seeing none, is there anybody from the public that wanted to ask a question? I'm not seeing anybody. We'll give it a second, but. No, nope, I think we're okay. all set. With that, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, opposed. Congratulations, BJ and Dean. You're thank you for doing the job. Animal control, yes, and thank you for doing the job. Yeah, thank you both. Uh, we'll be in touch and get you the paperwork to fill out with Rosemary and uh, you know, get you on the road to, to kind of learn the ropes. All right, I'll be in, in touch over email with both of you. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have a candidate for the uh, town fire warden as well. Yep. And that and would be... I saw him on, okay, here we go. Um, so we also have a candidate uh, for our town fire warden. Um, and that is Corey Davis. Corey, why don't we uh, give you an opportunity to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, so I've, um, I've got a background in, uh, well, I've been with the fire department for over 10 years, um, lived in Johnson my whole life. I also worked with the sheriff's department for about 10 years. Um, I, uh, I've always kind of been interested in the fire service, and this is just kind of one more thing I think that would, uh, with my background, would kind of benefit the town. Um, I've got a really good relationship with Gordy Smith and also the assistant fire warden, uh, Gary Underwood. Um, but I think that uh, given that uh, the time I've spent with the fire department, um, knowing knowing everybody that's on and the uh, amount of time I've, I've lived here in Johnson, kind of got to know a significant amount of the town and the people. That, uh, that would be a pretty good fit for me. Thank you, Corey. Is there any board members have any questions or are we prepared to, or for me, accept the motion? Corey, I'm Kyle. Um, I've lived here my whole life too, but I don't recognize you. You must be quite a bit younger than me. <laughs> uh, 33, I think, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think. Good question. <laughs> I'm 34. <laughs> I'm 35. <laughs> anyway, um, nice to meet you. Um, so, did you say that you were actually on the Johnson Fire Department? No, you just have a relationship with people. Oh, I, I have been on for over 10 years now. So oh, I'm you still. have? Yeah. Huh. Okay. Um, Great. So I'm a little bit naive to this position, um, Brian. So maybe what, can you describe what the credentials are for being a fire warden exactly? I, I really actually don't know. Sure. Uh, so the fire warden's primary responsibility is issuing burn permit and fire safety uh, warnings. Um, so it, take somebody who, who does have good coordination with the village fire department uh, because the village fire department provides fire service for the town. Mm -hmm. uh, and we want somebody who has some experience with um, fire safety and fire science in general uh, in order to, under good advice, issue those burn permits or, or deny those burn permits when appropriate. Uh, but that, that's the, the chief responsibility of the fire warden. Thank you. And my understanding is they're not out there by themselves. They have state uh, 
liaisons that they work with for recommendations, as well as trainings that are available. Do we do we have a mandatory a training? I mean, I know Gordy's was the fire warden forever, so I, I wonder if we have any sort of we don't really have a process uh, for having a new fire warden. Uh, Gordy had been it for so long, um, but we'll work with Gordy and Corey and kind of work out what does Corey, assuming Corey gets the, the, the appointment, uh, you know, what does the person need to know? Um, you know, that it worked pretty seamlessly under Gordy. We want to kind of extend that as, as best we can. Um, You know, so we, we don't have a process in place, but that'll be something that we, we work out. I'm sure Corey's a quick study. It won't take him long to get up to snow. No, I, ha I have no doubt in that. I was just wondering, just because this position has not come up for so, like, decades, <laughs> I was just curious what our protocol was. Now, this is different than the constable position uh, or the, the health officer position. Is this something that we would require a background check for, Brian or Eric? It would be a good idea. Uh, I would still recommend it because it is a, a position of employment. Okay. I believe they have some ticket writing uh, authority for yeah. violations of burn commit. I might be wrong, but I, I believe that that is written by the fire warden, but that might be written by the fire chief. So I'm honestly not 100% sure. Uh, and again, Gordy didn't, uh, and Corey as the new fire warden would not be working in a vacuum. We'd work very closely with the fire department. Uh, so if he was out on a call, I guess I'm not 100% sure who writes the ticket if it's a on a, a violation that requires a ticket. Uh, My understanding is the fire warden in most cases. Okay. My question is, Corey, how how would people reach you? You know, we we knew Gordy's uh, phone number. You know, are you are you generally available? I, I am. I I uh, like I said, you know, I live here in Johnson and I work here in Johnson, so I'm always around. Do you get Gordy signed as fire warden? <laughs> yeah, he will. Any other questions, or is the board prepared to uh, make it official with a motion? I just have one last common question. Is it sounds like it's a it's a very good thing that Corey has a good relationship with the fire department. Do we, Brian? Do you see any conflict of interest with that? No, I, I don't see. Uh, any point where uh, Corey wouldn't be able to represent the the best interest of the town uh, in his in his capacity as fire warden, despite also working for the village fire department. Uh, we've never had that circumstance, and I, I can't really envision a case where um, that would come up. Okay, thank you. I think it's rather like having a medical examiner being a doctor myself. Yeah. You yeah, would think they would like be. That I just thought it would be good to ask the question just to, mm -hmm. just to be sure. Yep. Nope, it's a good question. Mr. Is the Chairman? Board? Yes, point. I make I make the motion that we the board appoint Corey Davis as a town fire warden with the usual background check. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. We got a motion and a second. Uh, if there's no further board member comments. I am seeing one hand up. Yep, Beth. Yeah, I just want to make the point that I did a quick search, and the state of Vermont has lots of information about what a fire warden does. So we shouldn't try to make it up as a town. Um, we should go use the resources that are out there. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Yeah, it, it is a position defined in statute. Um, I mean, there's actually like more than just statute out there. There looks like to be our training materials and job descriptions <laughs> and, you know, all of the resources you would need to get a fire warden up and running. 
Um, so I don't, I'm not negating the historical understanding that Gordy will bring at all. I think that's important too. Um, but I just want to state that we shouldn't be gathering our own training materials. Yes. Thanks. I don't think anybody would do that anyway, Beth. Duly noted. Any other comments? Is the board prepared to vote? Sensing it is. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you, Corey. Congratulations. Thank you, Corey. Thank you, Corey. Okay. River Conservation, conservation Interests, Lamoille River. So, uh, the is River Conservancy. Doug? Uh, has done a lot of work. Uh, going back to our Beard Park, uh, that was obtained thanks to the River Conservancy. Our uh, journey's end is also through the River Conservancy and uh, McEwen Island uh, also came through them. So we, ha we have a long history of cooperating with uh, mm -hmm. the River Conservancy and they've done a lot to develop our park and public spaces around and along the river. Uh, they are working on another parcel on River Road East in the Crossing Falls or Sloping Falls area uh, that they are uh, working to acquire uh, a parcel from the Manchesters to develop into another uh, public waterfront space. Wow. Cool. Do you have, uh, this is Doug, do you have that set of maps, uh, Brian? Yep. Yeah, um, the, yeah, if you want to weigh in, I will pull up the maps. Okay. the The River Conservancy had had furnished to uh, to Johnson Noah Pollock, who who uh, worked on the the uh, areas that, that Brian mentioned. Um, the Sloping Falls or Crossing Falls, uh, which is on the the north side of uh, East uh, River Road East, and at the far uh, Easterly end of the uh, the property of the Manchester's, uh, the River Conservancy is interested in uh, in seeing if they can acquire that. Uh, the goal would be to, like uh, Journey's End, um, make you an island to turn it over to the town of Johnson. Now, if you look at the Crossing Falls, it's called Crossing Falls because of in low water there is a uh, there you can stay dry and cross the Lamoille on, a, on essentially a bridge, uh, a granite bridge or a stone bridge. But if you see the, um, it says Crossing Falls and below that it's a portage trail. That portage trail comes from Dog's Head uh, and goes down pa across the, uh, the, there is a, you know, you know, just a, word agreement between between the River Conservancy and, and the Manchesters uh, to, to use that portage trail. And then there's an existing boat launch. That is uh, that existing boat launch is part of the uh, part of, of the uh, Lamoille Valley uh, Paddler's Trail, which uh, which has really been created by with the River Conservancy's assistance. So the Manchester's uh, Noah Pollock from the River Conservancy spoke today with CJ Manchester, and uh, they uh, the Manchesters are open to working with the River Conservancy. That means they're willing to negotiate, which means that we'll be looking for an appraisal um, to to be able to talk money uh, for potential purchase. So the purpose of this is. To why it's coming here is, is that I would like to ask the the select board to um, indicate their uh, favorability to this this project or to looking into this project. Uh, they the River Conservancy would be making an application for for appraisal funds. They think it'd probably be about two thousand dollars. They're probably thinking they can get a thousand and. Uh, from the Housing and Conservation Fund, and then they'd have to fundraise for the rest. They are not looking for a commitment from the town or from our budget. They would like uh, assistance, not in terms of money, but names or contacts, things like that, um, 
And uh, the goal is to get an appraisal and see if there can be an enter, in, enter into negotiations for this. This would be an absolutely, I don't know if you're familiar with this, uh, just, up, just uh, up East River Road is the crossing for the, uh, where the rail trail crosses. This would be an absolutely marvelous, really wonderful location with swimming possibilities in, in, in the mill pool, fishing, uh, picnicking. It'd be a great park, and I would suggest strongly that that the development of our of our river frontage has is it's, it hasn't been developed well as far as it presently. Uh, and if we are going to get development on the south side of, of Railroad Street, the south side of the Railroad Street Bridge, we might want to increase the desirability of this area. Sorry for the long pitch. <laughs> Good sales pitch, Doug. Uh, so what you're looking oh, for goodness. tonight is just uh, an interest in the board. Yeah. Okay. Nat? Is this, would the River Conservancy be purchasing the real estate or would they be purchasing an easement? I think they'd be then, purchasing the real estate. The real estate and then deeding it to the town like they did with the river, with the island? Yeah, Noah asked me to specifically you know, say that they would like, if they acquire it, they'd like to deed it to the town. They, the River Conservancy does hold some land, you know, but they, they, their preference would be to, to, to turn it over. Um, it, it, it's a long, long road to get there. Um, I, I would tell you, I've researched the title on this back into the early 1900s. And it, Vermont Electric, it was, it comes with dam rights on across the Lamoille there, meaning, legal dam rights, not, not necessarily rights from the state to, to create a dam. But, uh, uh, and the Manchester's acquired it from Vermont Electric Cooperative. So you can see the interest that there was at some point in time, because they don't generally own a lot of flat land unless you're putting solar panels in. And how much acreage would we be thinking, think talking about? about? Four, I think it's about four acres and that's just a guesstimate because there it's, it's not, not presently shown on a map. They own about 14 acres now, 14 plus acres. And uh, uh, my guess is it's about four acres. It, and it's, it, go ahead. It's right in the, I mean, it's right, it's right in the river basically. It's, uh, is it sandy? Is it uh, ledgy? Well, if you, if you see the portage trail going up, uh, the yep. okay if you go up there there's a gorge there you know it, it it's uh, a wonderful fishing spot fairly fairly confined and then it goes down and where it says crossing falls it, it's that crossing falls is in fact a dangerous spot in low water uh, yeah no yeah right so uh, you're looking basically from the access road there to the portage trail there yeah all that yeah. land in there yeah Okay. Cool. Neat. Yeah, I think I think this is fantastic. I think it um, it also is in line with the Brownfields area wide plan that um, was created a few years ago. Um, it's recreation. It could you know it's it's it also drink, will bring some really nice life, I think, to that area. It's feeling a little sad over there <laughs> without the Manchester Mill. Um, my question, Doug, is when you say park, what, what's, what's the vision? I, I heard like picnic tables. Is it more, is it like a, a place to, to, to eat your sandwich? to swim, to fish, is that, is that what I'm hearing? Like green space and then? Sort of the sky's the limit there, you know, mm -hmm. it's got, you know, it's, it's got places for swimming. It's got the, it's got a boat launch, which of course takes you downstream. It's got wonderful fishing there. Um, and it's got a lot of Japanese, Japanese bamboo or whatever they else they call it. You know, it, it's really a site that, that you, it, it's 10% of what it could be and it could be a hundred percent, you know? It's really, I, I wouldn't wanna, I would want 
a, a landscape architect would tell us what it what it could be because it's uh, uh, it, it it has wonderful potential, you know. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I just didn't know if there was there was a a, a real kind of like firm vision on what what that park would be, but it sounds like yeah, it could be a lot of things. There's a, there's an assessment that it has tremendous possibilities, mm -hmm. not what those exactly would be. Great. Thank you. This is awesome. Board prepared to make a motion. Is that what's asked of us, or do we just want to say we're generally in favor? I, what, what do you need done? I think. I think uh, the the endorsing the uh, proposal for uh, the River Conservancy. Possibly acquiring the uh, um, Crossing Falls area from the Manchester should an agreeable um, arrangement be made. It's a perfect one for you, Nat. <laughs> I think Doug just said it, so I'll move that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second that. Thank you. Okay, a motion is second. Is there any further board member questions? If not, we'll open it up to the public. Okay, I've got Kim up first. Go ahead, Kim. Thanks. Um, just checking in no, that it's involved in the Brownfields um, plan and um, whether or not the River Conservancy would do uh, an assessment on if there was any contaminants um, or if that would fall on the town given its history i don't know the answer to that i didn't i wasn't party to that kyle do you know my i know that the uh, the lcpc uh on the north side of the east river road below this below this property almost all the way to the bridge did a study and but that that study was for purposes of uh, of looking at the river corridor and seeing if they if they could uh, in that stretch uh, do some uh, floodplain rem remediation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know the answer. I I, I think that uh, um, you know I I don't think they're unwise in how they. Uh, how they approach these things, you know? Yeah, um, Kim, sorry if I, I, I threw it in with the brownfields. I guess I, um, not specifically that site, but Manchester's um, lumber yard was part of that, of that um, plan. So I guess I was speaking specifically to just to that area in, in general, um, but I, I'm not actually, I didn't, um, if I miss, misspoke and said that that was part of the Brownfields plan, that, that wasn't correct. Um, I bring it up also because of what um, Doug mentioned, where Manchester's got that property from. And as we've seen from the School Street um, property that was contaminated. So just a heads up that I, I wouldn't want the town to go forward with something and then find out that they're responsible for that. That, that would be in my mind, a really good thing to have. Um, a baseline on and make sure that it's um, assessed so that we don't get um, that burden. Thank you. I think that's an important point. Thank you, Kim. Is there any further comments? I don't think there's anything really to worry about there, Eric, to tell you the truth. I don't think anything's ever been there. Really? Yeah. The, the school street site was, uh, they stored transformers and they had PCBs and, and whatnot. Right. This, this is an undeveloped uh, site that I suspect, and it's only a, you know, uh, a, a guesstimate was used uh, for, you know, was bought, bought speculation that perhaps it could be a, a source of water power. Yeah, and I, I, I mean, that's, no, Good, but that's still speculation. And I think we could find out a little bit more about that since we're early in the process and there's a long way to go. That, that's one thing that we can we should look into before we take ownership of it. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, it goes without saying. 
And I think even before the River Conservancy can can purchase it to deed it to us, they would they would they would know all you know they would have they, they would know if that's a contingent. They, they would at the very least know if there had to be more work and more done to find out. Yeah. Um, yeah, one, once it gets subdivided and, and uh, gets ready for transfer, property transfer, there'll be a little bit more done about it. And yeah, we don't know the answer yet, but I think we will know the answer before we accept it. Mm -hmm. um, if we ever get to it. Yeah. Okay, is there any further public comment? I'll give it a second, but I don't see anybody. Okay. Board prepared to vote? Sensing yep. you are. All those in favor, seeing five saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, update on candidate night. All right, so the candidate night has been finalized. Uh, for Friday, February 19th at 5 o'clock p.m. Uh, Dave Williams will be moderating. Uh, the candidates have a short, basic, couple of basic questions uh, that they're prepared for, and then we'll have uh, some opportunity from the public, um, again, moderated by Dave Williams. Okay. Uh, Right. Any comments from the board? Where do we publicize or, or how do we get the information to us or how do I hook up? So uh, it'll be using our same Zoom link uh, and we will be promoting this uh, like any other meeting. Uh, so that's going to go up on social media and public postings uh, this week, uh, okay. tomorrow. Thank you. And I'm assuming Brian, everyone's got the all the candidates have the questions, and I haven't seen the questions, but I, I'm assuming. I, I believe that the candidates all do. I see three of our candidates, and they're they're nodding. So. Okay. Great. Good. Thank you. All right. Okay. Nope. Uh, uh, Beth has a comment or a question. Go ahead, Beth. Um, my question is, so the questions themselves are just about us. They're not topic oriented questions mm -hmm. um, is the first thing I would like to say, uh, which is unfortunate, but I think we know what the topics are going to be. Um, the second question I have, Brian, is I was pretty vocal and I will continue to be vocal about my concern of um, the, um, questions and answers from the public being um, getting a little out of hand because there's been some heated topics and there will be heated topics in that discussion and answer. I'm frankly not worried about how I handle it, but I am worried about the um, impact it can have on our community. Um, and I'm for one am not for creating more animosity than already exists. Um, so I'm curious if there's going to be time limit on the questions or the people asking questions and the conversation back and forth. Is that going to be allowed? Like, what are their rules for moderation? That really will be up to Dave Williams and he's very experienced and able to moderate town meetings and such. So I, I, I don't think you'll get what you're, you're, you're afraid of. I don't think that'll happen. Not with Dave. And if it, did get out of hand. Brian has the uh, shut off key. He can shut it right down. Sorry, I went off mute uh, so prematurely. Um, so I totally trust David. So I just want to throw that right up there. Yep. yep. Totally trust David. Um, I do think though that expectation for people joining the meeting needs to be really clear before question and answer begins. Um, so. Yep. I, I agree. Um, Dave and I have a meeting tomorrow morning uh, to go over moderation and uh, help him get a little bit of experience with the moderation tools and things that we have through Zoom. Uh, I will also be attending to help with the kind of technical piece of this. 
uh, which I hope will make the, it a little bit easier uh, having one person kind of vocally kind of moderating and another person to be able to handle the electronic side rather than one person trying to do all of it. So I think that we're going to have pretty good tight controls on the structure and, and running of the meeting. Um, and we'll make sure that those are clearly articulated at the beginning of the meeting and when we open up the question and answer session. Yeah. Yeah, Beth, I think those are really valid con concerns. And um, I know I trust David too, but I know that his experience is mostly at town meeting and in person and Zoom can be different and, and, and just different and can be a little bit tricky. So I'm glad Brian that you got, you and he are going to kind of try to work out those kinks beforehand. Yep. That's really important. Uh, we actually, it would not hurt if we had a couple of volunteers uh, who wanted to sit in on the meeting with us. Um, so if anybody's interested, shoot me an email and we'd be happy to have a couple extra volunteers to serve as uh, guinea pigs for our moderation training session. Actually, that's a good run up to uh, the informational meetings as well. Yep. Yeah, yeah, that, that's kind of we're doing the, the whole gamut of kind of everything that, you know, he's basically familiar with a Zoom meeting, but integrating it with the moderation he does for town meetings a little bit different. Uh, so that's what we're really focused on. Could we also request that, um, just because there might be a bunch of names that we don't recognize or, or devices that don't have names, just to make sure that everybody is, um, that we know who everybody is. <laughs> so it's not, I don't know. I just think- fair, I think that's a fair request. Mm -hmm. You know, that, uh, you know, we, you know, we could uh, say that we're not gonna accept questions or comments from people who aren't named. I mean, like right now we have somebody on here that's only labeled as iPhone. Yeah. yeah. I don't know if I is their first name and phone's the last. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, there, there's a very yeah, different threshold between listening to a meeting and actively <laughs> participating. So it might make sense to only take uh, questions and comments from people who are identified. Yeah, I think that oh. has to be an absolute ground rule. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or, or, or how about the, at least they um, say their name before they start speaking? Is that would that be acceptable? A lot, of, a lot of people don't know how to change their name on Zoom. They just don't know. It sounds no problem. It sounds good. And some people would be calling in, and there's no way of putting your name there. Yeah, yeah right. as long as they announce who they are, that should be fine. Mm -hmm. All right, I've got a comment from the public. Go ahead, Kim. Hey, thanks. Quick question. Um, are people who are not town or village residents in, invited to ask questions as well? I don't know if we'll invite them, but I don't think we can stop them. It's not town, town meeting. We have to recognize anybody who is not a resident, uh, but this isn't town meeting. It's just a candidate's night. But that's a good question for the yeah. informational meeting. Is that considered a town function or is that, because it's not really the select board that's doing it? That is a good question about the information meeting. And, and my point would be that if there's a lot of people that it would be really nice to give first preference to people who are living in the town and who this is going to be the representative and they if they have a question versus someone who doesn't live in the town and has questions but i don't know that's it, it might be a nice it preference but it might not be something we legally can do okay all right thanks yeah but we'll find out on the informational meeting i would guess the candidates night uh debate that's open to everybody, but the informational meeting might be uh, town only. Yeah, there, there might be some rules related to the information, but 
candidates tonight is just something we've made up. It's not, yeah. there's no state statute or rules associated with it. Well, in that case, you suppose we can't make the rules? I think that we'd be well within our rights to say that we're going to residents first. Uh, how do we verify and check if they're residents first is difficult. Uh, and cutting off discussion at the end could be a little challenging too. I, I think we got to be very careful here. The trustees got in a lot of trouble for this and we don't want to go down the same path. Yeah. Well, other, that, other, was, that was different though, Eric. That was village and town, but all within Johnson. No, it's the same. It, it, the difference between the village and the town is no different than the town of Johnson and town of Hyde Park. It's two different uh, municipal uh, entities. Uh, I don't know what the legalities are, but if it's practical and if we can justify it, I would presume that we, this, this is for informing our, our village and town voters, all our town voters on our candidates. And, and I would prefer questions from the people in our community for that purposes, because we're trying to make good use of our voters citizens time who are might be voting. And I think I got to agree with you, Doug, because uh, th this would be a whole lot different than a regular meeting. You know, this is a candidate's night. Uh, you know, we were always under the assumption, you know, when I lived in the village, you know, and, and I don't think, you know, that it was anything sinister, but we were always on the assumption that if we lived in the village, that people in the town uh, couldn't address village business. Well, evidently they found out different that, you know, people have a right to speak in, in any forum. Uh, uh, but th there is a difference here. Uh, it's not like official village business or official town business. Uh, so I think we could limit who we allow to speak, don't you? I don't know what the I don't know what the ruling would be on this, but I'm just suggesting that if if it's possible, there would be a good reason to to so limit it. Yes, me too. I agree. I agree. Let's not overestimate. Let's not I, overestimate out of towners desiring to participate in our uh, in our town. Oh politics. yeah, yeah. This could be a nothing burger. Uh, you know, this could never happen. But I think people are just kind of you know trying to be the devil's advocate here and that. Uh, you know, I don't want to belabor this anymore either. You know, maybe people from uh, other communities could care less what we're doing here. And Brian, maybe you want to get Dave's read on this and possibly check with the league. Yeah, I, I think so. I, I've got a, a train with the league on Wednesday about the information meetings. Okay. Uh, so I'll have an opportunity to ask in person about uh, other meetings and what kind of restrictions we can make from outside the town. Um, if we can make restrictions or if we can prioritize or if we can do anything. Would these meetings, there's no, there's no official board meeting, is it? And there's no action or there's no action being taken. There's no action to be taken. It, it is going to be a meeting of the board. Um, which is just because we could have a quorum of people there. So, which right. one is the meeting of the board? Uh, the the candidates' night. I, uh, yeah, the board is hosting it, but it's really not a board meeting. If three board members are there, it is a quorum. Yeah. So yeah. if only I two guess board members show up. We it really is. should get some uh, legal advice on this, what we can and can't do. Yeah. I, I think that it's kind of a, a meeting of the board with an empty agenda. Um, you know, that we're not, there's no action that's planned to be taken, but we've got enough members of the board there. And if the board members are asked, you know, if they express an opinion about something that could come before the town, uh, we're better off having warned the meeting. 
Are you talking about informational meeting or are you talking about candidates night? Candidates night still. Okay, well, uh, candidates night, uh, just two board members show up and three others don't. And then you don't even have to worry about it. Hmm. Can't guarantee that would happen. Well, I tell you what, I'll be the first one. I, I won't show up. Let's get a legal advice from uh, the league of what we can and can't do on both the candidates night, because that may be a little different than the informational meeting. Yeah, that is different. Yeah. No question about it, but you know, if just three of us didn't show up, it wouldn't muddy any waters at all. We probably have to give them some money back. <laughs> yeah, who okay. gave who money back? Can we let Margo speak? She's had her hand up for a good while here. Yeah. Yeah, if we're ready for uh, public comment again, uh, uh, Margo has her hand up. Okay. Let's... Or could be Paul. No, no it's Margo. Hey, how you doing? Hi, Margo. Thank Margo. you. Good, Margo. I, um, yeah, so actually my hand was up uh, actually before Doug and Mike, I th think really um, I'm just echoing, I think what I heard from each of them, which was, you know, if this, if and it's about the, um, you know, the candidates night and it's, I think Brian said it's something we kind of made up and then Doug said, well, you know, we could maybe put some rules to it. And I think like if the goal is to have the candidates introduce themselves uh, to the residents and the voters and then for the residents and the voters, you know, to make their impressions and to um, ask their questions, it makes sense to me that it would be uh, sort of limited in some way uh, to the voters of Johnson. Mm -hmm. Just to, as Mike said, it might be a nothing burger, but I think, you know, we plan so that it can be the most productive night uh, getting to the, the stated goal, which um, I think probably is like for, you know, to get to know our candidates and to ask them questions. Mar Margo, Thank the you. nothing burger was somebody else from a, another town uh, talking, not that the whole thing was a nothing burger. Well, I, I think that's what Margo meant. I think okay, I, I just wanted to get that clarified, you know, just for the, <laughs> just for the record, you know. The, and and I think to Margo's point, it would be our preference that only town residents would be able to to uh, ask questions, speak to the candidates. Uh, obviously, anybody could zoom in and listen, as well as the informational meeting. It's really the only the town uh, voters that should be taking part. But I'm just not quite sure if legally we can restrict it. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so we need to find that out. Yeah. yeah. Margot still got her hand. No, it went back down. Is there anyone else? Oh, oh it's back oh, again. Come in again. Okay, go ahead, Margot. Sorry to take two seconds. Um, just to say, go on public record that, Mike, I was agreeing with you twice in one meeting. I'm done. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's that, nothing. That, that's a record, isn't it, Margot? Is that a record? Yes. Yeah, I think that's, so. That's not yeah. something you want to be publicly known. I don't care. <laughs> it doesn't make any difference to me. We're, we're all supposed to be in the same community, right? Yeah. I appreciate it, Margo. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Uh, if there's no further questions or comments on the candidates night, and, I, and we also went into the informational meeting discussion a little bit. Okay, why don't we move on to the plowing related complaints. Okay, so uh, really just giving the board an update, we received uh, late last week a uh, uh, complaint about uh, some of the plowing and some possible damage to a resident on Upper French Hill. We are investigating, uh, Hugh has done an initial investigation, uh, getting out there before any weather or anything could come in and change the situation. I'm going up with Hugh next week to meet with the homeowners and continue the discussion. Okay. Uh, that's really about all we've got to report at this point. Anybody got any questions? If not, as 
Mark will get his hand up again. Uh, another time? No. no. Okay. 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 Well, thanks for the update. And uh, we'll look forward to what that resolution is. Yep. And uh, the, as the, the board knows about this, but we'll kind of carry it out. We, we had a complaint on animal cruelty as well. And we uh, investigated that, had Tracy up. Uh, and with cooperation from the sheriff's department, uh, we investigate, investigated the situation. It does not look like uh, it really warrants pursuing a, a case, as a case of animal cruelty. Uh, we did ask the homeowner to make some repairs to their chicken coop, coop uh, but they are caring for and uh, you know th th there is no animal cruelty going on. Uh, so. We're just making a couple of repairs to make sure that they, they have proper shelter uh, through the rest of the winter. Okay. Anybody got any questions on that? Okay. Uh, before we enter into any of the executive session items, let's back, go around to some of the things that we wanted to add to the agenda. Uh, why don't I do the, uh, I sat in on a emergency management seminar for spring flood outlook uh, a couple of weeks ago. And uh, this is with uh, Vermont Emergency Management and the National Weather Service. Basically right now we have lower than normal snowpack and lower than normal uh, ice density in our rivers. So the uh, chances of a ice jam and flooding resulting is lower than normal. Uh, Spring outlook obviously can change quite a bit depending on what kind of rainstorms and events we might have ahead of us. But uh, as of right now, it's uh, we're running a little bit lower than normal. The other good piece of news is uh, a week or two ago, we I got an email from Krell that they will be in Johnson uh, the week of uh, town meeting to do a uh, they want to do a site visit to the river. And this is a yellow jackets study program uh, for looking for mitigation measures uh, that possibly we could take in the town to prevent another ice jam like we had a couple of years ago. And that's about all I got. Unless anybody has any questions on that. I have a there, question. Go ahead, Doug. Did they ever do their, their uh, study here? No, they never did because uh, the whole COVID-19, nothing happened with them. So hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, they'll come here, do a site visit, and this summer they'll be doing their study. Doing as a paleoanthropologist or something? <laughs> Eric, was this a big follow-up to that study that we had last year or the year they, before? We've never had it yet. Sure we did. We had a uh, a big map and everything uh, of somebody talking that we had a big presentation about uh, flooding and what could be done to mitigate the flood in in the village. It wasn't Krell. Yeah, there wasn't Krell. That was just uh, LCPC, I think, did it or somebody they had. But this is uh, the cold weather people from down in Hanover, uh, New Hampshire, that are going to come and do a study on our river in Johnson and uh, up in Swanton, where the two huge ice jams were. Well, that's interesting because I thought the one that we had was pretty stinking thorough. You know, this is one that would uh, possibly give us uh, some mitigation measures that we could look at implementing. Okay. It, they have not been here yet. They, they were supposed to be here last summer, but when the whole coronavirus came, uh, they suspended it. Okay. Well, fingers crossed, maybe it'd be this summer. Yeah, I, I know which one you're talking about, Mike, and it was a really good thorough study, but it was uh, more about managing floodplains than it was uh, specifically about floods. It was you know, that we might be able to redraw and modify our floodplain and flood risk uh, by preserving and uh, dedicating some certain spaces to, you know, dedicated floodplains uh, 
and to allow development in other places that that could displace water out of the the existing floodplain. Right. They were talking about digging these big pits, and lining them with rocks and all yep. kinds of stuff. So I mean, it's that was quite a study. Yeah, what, it was a really good study, very thorough, and and I think it will be very useful for us in the long run. But it was not. Uh, these really are looking at different issues. And this has got a lot more teeth, I'm sure. Yeah. Yep. And Krell is doing a study to try to figure out what happened, why we had the ice jam, and then what we could do to try to uh, mitigate it. I, I think it's something similar, like up in High, uh, Hardwick, where they have those granite yeah. boulders in the middle yeah. of the river. Like you know, dragon like, teeth in the river. Yeah, yep. I think those kind of... Those kind of things are things that they look at. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nothing else? You've got an update on the dog bite? Yep. Uh, so we haven't received the report yet, but uh, we've started an investigation on a dog bite that I think is going to result in a, a vicious dog hearing um, or a potentially vicious dog hearing. So just to give the board a heads up that we're likely to have another meeting uh, within a week to deal with the, that dog situation. So check your calendars. I can see Margo's missing that. She will, yeah. she liked those dog hearings. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, it, it says it's likely to result in a, a hearing. Uh, we probably shouldn't discuss it too much outside of the format of the hearing, but giving you a heads up that this is coming soon. Okay. Um, and unless things change dramatically, it's going to result in a hearing. Uh, the other one, I, uh, question about our meeting in March. Our first meeting in March will take, would normally take place the day before town meeting. Um, but we also usually have an appointment hearing the day after town meeting. Uh, and in most years, we haven't had both, uh, but I wanted to kind of clarify that, that are we planning on having a meeting uh, before town meeting, uh, before the new elections um, on that Monday, or are we just going to have the meeting the day after? I guess what would the board sounds fine. Okay. Because uh, we have to meet after town meeting to do appointments anyhow. Yeah. Uh -huh. So and we plan on Wednesday, the day after. Yeah, that'll be Wednesday, March 3rd. And for whoever uh, wins the election, that'll be your, your first board meeting will be seven o'clock Wednesday, March 3rd. As soon as you get sworn in by Rosemary. Okay. Uh, uh, and the last was uh, normally during town meeting, we have uh, the legislators appear during town meeting. Um, that's not going to be the case this year to have them appear during town meeting. Do we want to pick one of the uh, information sessions to invite the legislature to? I guess I'll At least open they're that. not going to break up the flow of the meeting this year. Open that to board members and the public on do they want us to invite them? I think, that, I think at the information meeting, you're going to have enough stuff to do about town business rather than bringing in the state business. I think you ought to have it at a, at a meeting in March, you know, where they come in. That's a good idea, Doug. I would sense that agreement to let them set up their own meeting. Yeah. Well, do we want to let them set up their own meeting or, or do we want to invite them to a board meeting in March? I think the, if they give a update like they do at a town meeting, you're talking about an hour discussion. Um, you know, let them, if, if there's an interest in the public and they have something they want to share, let them set it up. Okay. Good point. 
think we had them in. I mean, they were. We had them in for discussion just what a month ago. Yeah, um, before the start of the session. So yeah, at that, that time, was. I think doing an after session wrap up with them would be nice too. But um, yeah, but not during our info meeting. I don't think. Um. I see Diana's hand up. Yep. Okay, go ahead, Diana. Hi, I'm sorry. I'm still trying to figure out the appropriate place for public comment. And I'm, I'm not quite sure if this is the right time. Go ahead. Um, I just wanted to follow up after my comments at the last select board meeting. I received a lot of good information from other community members about the broadband situation. And it got me thinking that, um, yeah, frustration may not solve the problem, but um, I think increased communication is gonna help. And I think that um, I wanted to maybe propose a couple of low to no cost um, things to consider because I understand where Doug is coming from that the broadband committee and the town in general has no you know, taxing authority or ability to raise money, but that doesn't mean that they are powerless to help the un and underserved in our community get better access to broadband. And actually those people are really reliant on the more connected to kind of help them out because they're already marginalized. And like when they did the community surveying where you were supposed to go online and say how bad your service was, you know, that's something that somebody with poor service, you know, already can't do very well. And so what I wanted to see was I've been looking around and it seems like many communities offer something kind of almost like a newcomer's packet when people move to town. And I don't know, I came to Johnson so long ago, I don't remember getting anything like that or I don't know if you do that now where um, like when people come to town, they get a little packet of information about like, this is for uh, how you can deal with your trash and this is where you can get your electricity. and. These are the phone companies that are in town and these are the places you might get internet. And that might be something that would be really useful because right now it seems like front porch form is the only way people are sharing information. And I see a lot of requests when people move to town saying, you know, what cell service do you have? And, you know, everyone's complaining about which ones don't work. And it seems like a resource that shared what did work could be really helpful to people. And I know Johnson Works has has done, I mean, ever since I had my shop and got involved with Johnson Works, you know, we tried to publicize the businesses in town. And I wonder if there's maybe an equivalent effort that could be made to publicize some of the utilities. And, you know, my particular emphasis right now would be on broadband. Um, you know, after the last meeting, people told me about Starlink and I looked into that. Um, and unfortunately, it seems to be one of those things where people who already have service can get better service through Starlink people who are already underserved are marginalized once again, you know, we can't get Starlink, you know? So um, it seemed like that was maybe something that, you know, I hate to put more work on the town select board, but maybe some somebody in town, you know, Johnson Works or somebody could put together just some kind of information sharing to supplement what we're doing on Front Porch Forum to just put options out there. I mean, I, I know there's people out there who have better internet than me. And I just feel like I'm alone in trying to solve this problem. And, you know, asking my neighbor, so what do you use? You know, how do hotspots work? You know, and anything that anybody could do to help facilitate this process for the people who have even worse service than me would be so beneficial. So I just had to put a plug in for that um, option. And then the other thing I thought of is you know, interfacing with things like the Department of Public Service. You know, I, I just found myself so thwarted in trying to work with them to get access to the grants that were supposed to extend the last mile. And, um, you know, it seems like, I guess maybe I had a misunderstanding, but I kind of thought that's what the broadband committee could work on is kind of being an advocate for, you know, broadband access in town, not just you know, taxing or setting up a municipal union district, but maybe the, they would, um, you know, just be a way to interface with the legislation or legislators, you know, people who are in a position to get money or make decisions. And then the other thing I, I wanted to ask about was 
um, I saw on Front Porch Forum, the ATV Club had mentioned a, a resident from Eden posted to the Hyde Park Front Porch Forum about our Johnson ATV issue, saying that they had spent over $10,000 improving a class four road. And you guys know my interest in class four roads. And as soon as I heard that, my like alarms went off because I also know that we have rules in town where you're actually supposed to get a permit or at least provide notification to town if you're doing work on a class four road. And if the ATV club is doing $10,000 worth of work on a class four road, I think like we all need to have a little bit more information about that. Um, and like, did they get the permit that they were supposed to? And, you know, are they doing things to actually improve the drainage or affect it in a negative way? And who's monitoring that? And, you know, if they're doing repairs on a class four road, um, maybe that means that the ATVs really are causing more damage. And, you know, that would be addressed, you know, with this whole um, article gets voted on. But so those, those are my two things for tonight. I'm so sorry to um, prolong a meeting that's already long, but. Okay, I'll open it up to any board member want to comment on Diana's concerns raised? Yeah, yeah, this is Doug. I, I think it would, uh, perhaps she already has, but I don't know, have you spoken to Lucy Rogers? Um, yeah. You have, okay. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that her committee of the House Energy and Technology Committee is, uh, is working on the broad on broadband. You know, it's a major interest there, um, mm -hmm. and uh, if and they are prioritizing money to the CUDs. Uh, of course, it's probably not going to be enough, and it doesn't. You know, this is a massive undertaking, just like uh, electrification was a massive undertaking, uh, rural electrification. So uh, it's going to take time, and and it shouldn't take time. We're you know, I've been pushing this for 10 years uh, and it's only the pandemic that has brought it to everybody's attention. So uh, everybody needs service. You know, you can sign up and you may or may not become a beta tester for Starlink. Uh, there are one person I know in Johnson. I know another person in Hyde Park who signed up and uh, uh, he got it in two days about a week ago and then, then turned it down uh, because he had, better choices. I don't, I don't know how Starlink chooses the people. Uh, the idea that Johnson Town can do something when, you know, as I indicated last time, perhaps in too, too negative language, this problem needs to be solved at a federal level and the state is working as hard as it can on it. And uh, it, it will take time and the town really has, uh, Creating the CUD was a, a giant move forward because, uh, frankly, our broadband committee had ex exhausted their resources and moved as far as they could. Yeah, I, I hear you, Doug. I think what, and correct me if I'm wrong, Diana, but you and I have been in a little bit more communication about this after our last meeting. Um, I think what Diana is saying is that there's more weight when a, a board <laughs> advocates for its, its people's needs versus just one resident at a time. And rather than sort of rolling over and saying, oh, we, we need all this you know, federal money, which is, is probably true, we can continue to, you know, there's, there's no reason why, you know, Brian or, or Eric or whomever, you know, we can kind of keep the pressure on and keep advocating for our people in their needs. Um, so I think there are lots of n things that we can continue to do to keep pushing this, this topic that isn't really heavy lifts for us, you know, but, but it might get more traction coming from a town select board versus an individual resident. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm, this is probably my, my last formal select board meeting in yours too, Doug, but I, I think it's, you know, I think it's really important for whomever comes into our positions and the current board to, to keep, to keep the steady pressure. That's, that's, that can be very, that can be very effective. So um, thank you, Diana, for keeping the steady pressure on us because it's, 
it's really easy. I mean, I, like I mentioned to you, I live in the village. So uh, occasionally I have a glitch and I'm like panicky. I can't imagine what you're dealing with. It sounds so, like you said, you know, just alienating and isolating and, and very limiting. So I, I appreciate your, you continuing to bring this to us because I think it's a really important, important thing for so many reasons. Mostly my heart just breaks thinking of the people who have even worse connection than I do. I mean, I'm able to participate on Zoom tonight. You know, last meeting I couldn't, um, I had to resort to using my phone. I had an important telehealth appointment um, last Monday and lost connection partway through and had to resort to using the phone. And, you know, and I don't have it nearly as bad as many people because at least I'm, I'm engaged, I'm at these meetings. Yeah. And Zoom has facilitated that immensely. It's so much easier than going in person. But just think of all the kids, you know, that have to be doing school at home and don't even have reliable internet. And, you know, I got generous offers, you know, to come, you know, come, you know, use my, in, sit in my driveway or, you know, come to the town meeting or town hall and, you know, Wi-Fi hotspots are coming up all over. But, you know, have you gone to a psychotherapy appointment in the town hall parking lot? Do you know what that's like? Yeah. You know, it's not a, it's not a feasible option. It's certainly and not. I understand that you know it needs to be a federal movement, but it also seems like there needs to be something in the middle, you know, between federal and then each individual person like me, you know. And it seems like the town is a logical middleman to kind of advocate for people who are already marginalized to interface somehow with decision makers. And maybe it's just a pipe dream, you know, because you know. Maybe, yeah, maybe it's just a too big of a project like that Doug is saying, but it seems like in the meanwhile, at least like maybe like when people move to town, maybe we could say like, look, these are the options that many people find work for them in Johnson. Because maybe there is something else out there I could try. You know, I know that there's people in Johnson who work from home and right now I could not work from home. You know, what are they using? How do I find out about that? You know, I just feel so lost trying to navigate this by myself. Well, my, my neighbor, I was speaking to my neighbor yesterday who said that he contacted Comcast. Uh, and uh, I mean, the problem is really large. Comcast's price for him to bring broadband to his home was $80,000. Wow. Uh, Consolidated's price to him was 60000 I hope he annies up for either of those because then it'll be a lot less for me, you know. But uh, that, that's, that's the problem we're looking at. There's no doubt about the, the grievous injury that people are living with. You know, in 1920, you didn't, you know, the playing field, leveling the playing field was electricity. Now it's broadband. We are going to be abandoned if we, can, if we don't have that. You know, we absolutely need that. And I think the perception that the town is the answer is, is wrong. The answer is going to be through is going to be through the state and the communication union districts. Now the communication union district, even if they are not the, the, the entity, they are at least posing a challenge to the people who are uh, sitting back and saying, uh, well, we're not gonna go there. We, you know, There's a possibility we can go there and make money, but they're not doing it. Well, if, in this area, if you put the money in, and you go there first, the second one in line is not likely to be successful. And they're wondering why in the world they put these millions of dollars in. So, you know, you could start out doing small things like uh, poll, poll surveys, business studies. You know, we're in our second version of our business plan. Uh, and it, it's going to take time and the build out is, is many years. We are, we're, we have a meeting on Wednesday, the, the CUD, and, and we're going to explore the possibility of, uh, of discussions with consolidated, which will of course take a, uh, you know, a do not, uh, you know, uh, we, we won't be able to talk about what their, what their uh, business plan is and how it might affect us. There are things happening out there that are not apparent and that have nothing to do with how do you get this today, tomorrow, next week, or next month, but it's how do you get it as fast as you can is really what people are working on. Can we not address both things simultaneously? You know, help people become aware of what options for service exist now. We still have out hope that something might actually happen in the next decade. I don't think they're mutually exclusive. 
Well, I, I, we were, we looked at this plan. They were, they were hoping to put a dirigible in Waterville to bounce the signal off of. Uh, there's, there's a conflict sometimes between, or a balloon, there's a conflict sometimes between putting in something for the short term and being able to get something for the long term that works well. Uh, and it, it maximizing the efficiency of, of, of your money. Uh, you know, I, I, do you think that this is a, um, you know, your part of your position is also economic development stuff and, and I'm seeing that as part of this discussion, you know, when people want to move here or move here that they want, you know, that what Diana is saying is that, you know, that, that there's, there's a, a easily accessible uh, material for them to to look at and um, and to use if they do move here. Is that something that you think you could put together or we could work on to put together? I Again, I don't I don't see that as a heavy lift for us, but it could be really beneficial for for folks moving in or thinking about moving in. The town, the town would have to be very, very careful on doing something. Johnson Works could do this, put together a package, provide it for new people joining you know moving to the town but for us as a town government um if we said comcast is got good internet service and we left out consolidated uh, we could expose the town to some real uh, serious lawsuits we have to be very very careful that we're not endorsing one company over another or anything like that these maps exist you know you you can you can find out who is served who is not served. These maps exist. You know, if you got a hold of Leia, she could point out where you could go on the internet to find this out. Then, if you're dealing with truth in advertising and moving to to Johnson, you're going to be disclosing that you know what huge percentage of the square mileage of this town is not available, which people ought to know. What we really want to do is work on you know yes people. You know, there are not a lot of good choices, but this information is actually available. People have compiled it. You can get it. Leia can point out where on the um, on the web you can go for these studies on, on, on who is served, how well. Yeah, I, I add, added it in my notes as something to talk to Johnson Works about. Uh, for the reasons that Eric mentioned, the town really should not get into evaluating one business over another uh that would be really inappropriate use of our mouthpiece and our, our forum uh, but johnson works providing a welcome that might also pair pretty well with some of their other interests uh about promoting local business and so that this might be a good fit for them so i'll definitely bring it up yeah. Well, what I'm uh, saying is this information is available. You can you can find it out, and it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be say it's not a preference. It's just what are what's the up and down, and who's served and who's under and underserved, and uh, that type. I mean, these these companies that are doing this know this information already. You know. Uh, well, I I I'm I I would beg to differ. That that you, I mean I think we're talking two different things here, and. I'm afraid I'm not expressing myself well if it seems like the thing I'm interested in is seeing who's served and who isn't. What I'm talking about is when somebody is already at an address, you know, I've accessed the resources. It tells me I'm supposed to be able to get blank at my address and I can't. So I try this other service and it tells me, yes, you, you can get this at your address. And I call and say, sign me up. And they say, we don't serve your address. And then I get told by other people, we'll try Starlink. That's the new best thing, you know? And I try to get in with them and they say, no, we don't serve your address. We will in late 2021. And so then I get told, well, try blank. And I, I try that thing. And I, I, I just, I think what I'm interested in is an individual resident in town having easy access to what these different options are in an unrated way just these are other things that people in Johnson find provide services to them. And I think that doing these back channel things with neighbors on front porch forum is a poor substitute for what we could provide. 
I mean, it's a useful thing, but gosh, every single person has to reinvent the wheel and every single person has to do their own research to find out, you know, who serves Johnson. And so what I care less about is like, is Johnson served well and more about what are the options available? And I understand that the town can't, you know, promote one service over another, but, you know, maybe just consider, you know, having Johnson Works explore a newcomer's packet and say, look, these are the service providers in town, just so that if somebody's interested in doing the research, they know what the options are. And I think Brian's going to take that forward. Yeah, great. Thanks so much. Any, any idea about if the ATV club gets permits for working on class four roads? Uh, I know they have the both vast and the ATV club have gotten permits in the past. Uh, I don't know what the $10,000 might be, you know, mm -hmm. I, off the top of my head. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. Same. Sorry uh, to uh, prolong the meeting. I don't know. Yeah. $10,000 um, sounds a little bit high to me, but I wasn't there on the ground. You know, we, they made a proposal, described the project, we inspected that the project, you know, didn't interfere with the public's use, you know, that it, it was good practice and, and wouldn't disrupt the public's use and granted it. Uh, there's not really any discretion involved in that process. It's, you know, would the work you're proposing be disruptive for the, the public's use of the roadway? And if it's not disruptive, uh, we grant it. Okay, let's move on. Uh, Brian, you, did you have anything else? No, that was all my items. Okay, uh, Kyle, you had something with the town report? Yeah, um, I just wanna first say that Diana and whomever else uh, never apologize for bringing things to us, we serve you. So this is this is the place to do it, and and um, and thank you for taking the time to come and be here at nine o'clock at night on a Monday. So um, thank you. Yes, I uh, two things. Um, one is uh, congratulations, Eric, on the dedication. That was a pleasant surprise. I, I didn't know that was happening. <laughs> well, I didn't either. <laughs> Those auditors. And, okay. Okay. They, they pulled a fast one. Well, well deserved. I, I appreciate it. It's it's very appreciated. Yeah, no, it was a really, really nice, nice write up. So congratulations on that. Um, two other things I wanted to bring up with the with the town report. One is um, I'm going to sound a little bit like a broken record here, but I think for the last well, I'm on my sixth year, so at least five years <laughs> of those six years, I've I've asked for. Any uh, language that is gender biased to be corrected in the town report, and it mostly is, but there is a few places that are not. Um, the, the main one being on, at least on the digital copy is page seven, um, where it, and let me just get to it on my screen. Um, <clears throat> Right, so right at the top at appointments, it says, uh, speaking of you, Eric, it says select board chairman, Eric Osgood, select board vice chairman, Douglas Moldy. Um, and then a little further down, it says, uh, it says chairman of the um, Vermont Emergency Management, chairman of the select board. And then it says green update chairman, Shane Spence, and I realize you all probably identify as, as males, but um, it, it's, you know, again, I've, I've asked that we get up to speed with the 21st century here and um, keep, keep wherever, you know, we can uh, gender neutral um, for a variety of reasons. One, just because it's what we need to do. <laughs> Two, it's, you know, um, when I see that, I think, oh, do you, I have, you know, it, it subliminally tells me that you have to be a man to be in positions of leadership and that's just not right and not true. So I, I would again ask on the record that all 
places that is not uh, gender neutral to be to be um, corrected. So that's uh, my first request. My second request is that um, I'm wondering about where the delinquent taxes is is put into the town report. I don't know if that state statute or, statute or not, but I've, it's always felt very uneasy to me to just sort of, it feels like really public shaming to, to um, publish that in our town report. And I just wanted to ask Rosemary about that, if that's absolutely necessary um, to just sort of publicly put out who is struggling potentially. Is, and uh, Is Rosemary still on? She must be she's, somewhere. She's there. Okay. She's here. Rosemary, can you answer that question? I thought the board discussed this a few years ago and they wanted to keep it in the town report. Okay, it is a board decision? It could be if they didn't want it in there. Okay, I, I didn't know if that was a voter decision or, or the board. Most town reports from other towns have it. There's a listing in there. Not, okay. not all of them, but a lot of them still have that. Yeah. I guess it's a, a future topic for the board to consider. And maybe we'll look into if we can do it or if it requires the voters uh, approval to have it or remove it. Okay. okay. Yeah, um, thank you. I just don't really understand its purpose other than making people feel really exposed and potentially publicly shamed. I, I think it's because it's public money and if somebody's not uh, contributing um, the rest of the public has the right to know, but I don't know. That, okay. that sort of seems why it would be there. Uh, as far as your other request, as you know, it's uh, it's the auditor's report. It's not our report. And uh, I certainly shared last year with them that uh, this request from you had come in. Um, you know, I can pass along this request again, but Nat, I, I sent the auditors uh, an email um, directly in January asking that they keep an eye out for uh, gender inclusive language um, and got a, a, a reply back from one of them, maybe two of them saying, yes, we heard that request last year and yes, we will uh, uh, be looking out for that. Um, so um, I, I I didn't. I don't have the ability to, to edit the report before it goes out or it's printed, um, but I did make the request to the auditors who do write the report. So I, I, they they are aware of it. Anyway. And thank you, Nat, for reminding them again. Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, anything else further? And I just wanted to say, if this is our last formal meeting, that it's been an honor and mostly a pleasure <laughs> to work with you all. And I won't be uh, disappearing for sure, but I'll, I'll, it'll be from a different perspective, so. Well, the meeting's not over yet. You may not want to thank us yet. No, I know, but before we go into executive session, but yes. Uh, but yeah, I guess uh, I would want to publicly uh, just thank both yourself and Doug uh, for the years that you've served. Uh, and I'm sure you both will be contributing in the future with other endeavors. So, but thank you for your service. And with that, we're ready to move on into executive session. For um, those- I do have a public comment. Oh, okay. Uh, go ahead. Evan? Uh, I guess it's probably too late for this year, uh, but back when there was talks about a building permit process. Mm -hmm. I believe it was motioned and seconded that it would be on the town ballot so that the town voters could have their say on it. It's not there. I just want to make sure this isn't being planned for a special meeting in the middle of the year or something. I mean, I, I got the consensus the board really actually wanted public input, but it's not on the ballot. That's a good point. And I'm trying to recollect, I don't think the, uh, the ordinance ever went through, did it? No, it didn't. I, yeah. I thought that it was 
motioned by Nat, I believe, to be on the town ballot and seconded by Mike so that the taxpayers could vote on it. I mean, if the ordinance never passed, that's fine. I thought that the intent back when it was being talked about was to get the voters' input and see if it was wanted. My recollection of that is a little bit different, and it was going to be that if we were moving ahead, it would be on the town ballot, but we are not moving ahead with that. Fair enough. Um. <laughs> You're disappointed, aren't you, Evan? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, My great grandfather would be rolling over in his grave if I didn't fight that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My, my understanding is that uh, that died on the vine before we got to this point. So it's not showing up on the ballot. That's good. Okay. With that, uh, for everyone from the public, we're going to be going in and out of some executive sessions. I do not anticipate any actionable items will be taken in public. Uh, you're more than welcome to stick around in the waiting room and come in and out as we bring you back in. But uh, otherwise, we'll be in executive session for, for the rest of the meeting, basically. And Well, that cleared them out fast. <laughs> I guess it did. <laughs> I would uh, entertain a motion to enter into executive session for a discussion on Hyde Park. So, so go ahead. So moved. Be one of your last, you have to read the whole thing out. Oh, shoot. Okay, then go ahead, Mike. <laughs> I don't have it in front of me. Okay, I, we, I move to go into executive session to discuss joint town uh, to joining the town of Hyde Park on a potential legal action as allowed by 1 BSA 313A1. Okay, we have a motion. Do we have a second? I will second it. Thank you, Mike. Motion, motion Welcome, thank you. second. Any other discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? Okay, show us in executive session at eight. Uh, or 917.